Welcome back, everyone. It has been a much needed break for the last month as Ryan does his move and I do, I don't know, life. But mm-hmm. we are back with a really fun game for Series 45. It is our first Belonging Outside Belonging game. Mm-hmm. But before we get to that, announcements. Announcements. Uh, so our first announcement uh, is actually about this episode. Uh, for some reason, uh, we have been having some technical snafus uh, with some of the audio going into the episode. So if the final product is uh, not exactly up to par for our normal audio standards, you know, I am currently in a brand new recording space, uh, which is literally a temporary corner in the corner of my brand new basement with blankets. It's no sauna. It's no, no sauna. sauna. It's definitely not the good sound dampening uh, quality of the sauna. Um, There's a little bit more reverb on my end and there's some other weirdness going on. And I've got uh, a water heater that turns on randomly Mm -hmm. that I'm not always aware of. So if there is uh, any weird audio issues, uh, just know that we're going to work to get those fixed. Um, I've got actually a contractor coming uh, this Friday, which will be last Friday as of the release of this episode (laughs) to talk about creating my new studio. So that's exciting. uh, that's very exciting. Uh, so we get to talk uh, actual dimensions and and materials and and cost so probably. So fancy. So yeah, probably the ones. But I very know. fancy. I'm excited we'll for see. you. I know. I'm really excited. We set aside some money from the sale of the old home to do that, so I could have a nice office uh, space that's that's pretty soundproof. Uh, yeah. That would double as a studio. So um, hopefully it'll be big enough to to have a small table in there to. To house like you know four people comfortably um and mm-hmm. maybe we can do some local recording sometime that would be fun i could come see yeah. your fancy new house i know. actually come visit you somewhere not six hours away <laughs> <laughs> exactly. actually hang out with you in wisconsin i don't know what? What? <laughs> that's weird we've never done that <laughs> Um, we don't really have any other announcements that we can remember. Both Ryan and I thought, I feel like there was something I was going to talk about, but we can't Mm -hmm. remember what it was. So, uh, if we think of it, we'll probably tweet about it or put it in next week's episode. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Right now, we are working on setting up recordings for our future series. Uh, Things are going okay there while we are navigating around Ryan being sick still, but hopefully he'll be better soon. Mm -hmm. Um... In the meantime, if you want to help us out, you can leave some ratings or reviews on the various platforms, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podchaser, other places that do podcast recommendations or whatever. Um, you can also check Podcast Addict and a few others that do um, that allow you to like actually review them right in the, the listening app. Mm. Um you will be able to hear your review read on our show in our call to action section at the end. So that's a fun little perk. And also it just makes us feel good. And that's nice. Yeah. It's nice. It is the time of year, I think, to, to just really to share the joy and make people feel good. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can hear us respond in real or recorded time, in podcast time, mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever that is. Absolutely. Uh, For now, uh, let's go ahead and get ready to dive into this magical series. Uh, Grab some hot cocoa, sit by the fire, and cozy up to an amazing start uh, to this series. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and this episode, my co-host Ryan and I are excited to welcome Danny from Pod Wonder. 
to discuss Danny's game, A Christmas Belonging, a belonging outside belonging, no dice, no masters RPG, about playing your very own made-for-TV Christmas movie. <laughs> Welcome to Character Creation Cast, Danny. We're really excited to have you here again. Hello. Thank you. It's happy to be here and to talk to you all again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you go ahead and tell us a bit more about yourself, where we can find you online, and any projects you're currently involved in? Sure. Uh, my name is Danny Dellinger. Uh, any pronouns are fine. Uh, I'm an RPG enthusiast and game designer based in Philadelphia. I tweet about things at Danny Plays RPGs. I make games about intimacy and cats and puns at dannymakesrpgs.itch.io. And I'm also one of the hosts of Pot of Wonder, a world building podcast where we make a where we build a world using random Wikipedia articles and then play an original game in that world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can find that at Pot of Wonder or however you found this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> a, a cat is attacking my arm. Excuse me. <laughs> and I think you've got uh, an appearance coming up, right? Oh, yes. Uh, a a time-sensitive plug. If you are going to be at PAX Unplugged the weekend of uh, December 10th through 12th, I'm going to be running A Christmas Belonging. Uh, at the Games on Demand station, which I think is in the RPG section. Very cool. So oh. if you if you listen to this and you like the sound of it, come play it with the person who made it. There you go. I'm very jealous of your ongoing experience. I keep trying. Yeah. I keep trying. Mm -hmm. It keeps not uh -huh. happening. Mm -hmm. It's home yeah. day. And you, I like yeah. looking at my my convention badges that I have like pinned to my board. Up here, Ryan's got his. You can actually see on the camera too <laughs> on the board behind mm -hmm. him. And I'm like, oh, conventions. Remember those? Yeah. Remember friends? <laughs> oh, and, uh, yeah. I, I just got my my COVID booster on Thursday. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I'm ready. Good to I'm go. Mas yeah. I'm masked. Oh. I'm vaxxed. I'm I'm gonna oh, be man. A, I'm gonna be in a big room with a lot of people. It's gonna be great. Yep. Yep, we were so close. I think in the interview we did on your show, we were like, we're going to CanaCon. And then like three days later, we're like, we're not going. <laughs> like, oh, bummer. That's so sad. Oh. <laughs> but let's go ahead and talk about your game, because that's what you're here to talk about. Let's start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? All right. So what is the core concept of a Christmas belonging? So uh, a Christmas belonging is designed to let you tell your very own TV Christmas movie. It, and if you're not familiar with that very specific genre, they are you know, very light, feel-good stories about romance and family drama. Mm. Uh, they're usually churned out by the dozens for Hallmark Channel and Lifetime and, and streaming services. And they're, they're famous for being very tropey and formulaic. And yeah. th this game kind of leans into that really hard. Like, yeah, a lot of the, the joy of a Christmas movie is kind of being able to like go into it knowing how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of a part of this game. And so, you know, a lot of the fun of it is what you're bringing to the table or like getting into those messy, melodramatic situations. Nice. Can you tell us a little bit about belonging outside belonging? Uh, no dice, no masters systems. Those are not ones that we've covered before on mm -hmm. this show. So mm -hmm. if you can can expound a little bit on what that means to this game. Yeah, uh, so it's a fairly new system uh, created by Avery Alder and Benjamin Rosenbaum in 2018 for, uh, for their games Dream Askew and Dream Apart. It's uh, kind of an evolution of Powered by the Apocalypse games in that they're, they're very narrative focused and uh, give the players a lot of power to decide things. Um, it also goes by the name No Dice, No Masters, which, as the name suggests, there aren't any dice that you're rolling and there isn't a game master telling the story for you. Mm. Uh, you, you each each player kind of has a, a lot of power to decide where the story goes. Um, there are instead of rolling dice, you have moves that are, you know, either more or less successful for the character that you can use. And there's a, a, a kind of built in token economy where, you know, you, you do a weak move and that gives you a token to let you do a strong move later on. That's pretty cool. I didn't know about the no game master uh, portion of the system before. That's a, that's a really interesting uh, uh, take on having all of these uh, no dice, no masters games being uh, effectively GM less, it sounds like, right? Yeah, and it's kind of handled in a really elegant way. You know, uh, players do get a, a bit of narrative control, but there are specific elements of the game that are 
uh, basically kind of distilled down into setting elements that are like mini characters, basically. They, they come with their own set of moves, and you are supposed to print them out and kind of put them in the middle of the table, you know, if you're, mm. you're playing in person, where everybody can reach them. And basically, at, at any time you want to call on one of those elements, you, you know, you just reach over, pick up the, pick up the sheet of paper with a setting element, and, you know, make, make one of the moves or, you know, describe something that is kind of falls under the umbrella of that setting element. Oh, really cool. Interesting. I don't think I've ever actually gotten to play a GMless game. Really? Like, I know about them. I know they exist. I've read some of them, but like I'm thinking back to my play experience and I don't think I've ever actually played like, one. Like not even Fiasco or anything? No. Oh, you haven't had, oh, okay, interesting. No, yeah. I've done like, I've been walked through how to play Fiasco. Yeah. Um, like, you know, um, when I went and picked up our like, promo copy or whatever at Gen Con two years ago. Um, Steve Segetti, like, talked me through it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, I've never actually played it. <laughs> it's, it's a very, yeah, it's a very interesting experience because then it's like everybody's riffing off of one another. It's, it's mm-hmm. really um, like a collaborative world-building experience um, baked into story. So it's a collaborative story experience at the same time. It's you just want to call things collaborative world building. I do. You want everything yeah. to be collaborative. It's, it's akin to oh. collaborative. It's a collab- yeah. It just has the collaborative, collaborative part, Ryan. It yeah. just has the collaborative part. I agree. <laughs> but, but I'm saying you, you've done collaborative world building before and, and, and yes. you're very uh, knowledgeable on that. So it feels like that right. applied to right. the story, yeah. uh, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I really, I I want to experience it. Part of me is like, is that stressful? Because like, who's in charge? Like, I don't. Every, like, everybody you know, and nobody. Is. Everybody, no, yeah. I don't know if I like that. I like, I like structures. <laughs> I like very clear power structures. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 you know, and and not a top. So I don't. I need someone else to be in charge. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I mean, there is always that kind of weird vibe when you start like. So what do we do? Mm-hmm. But like, like <laughs> once you you kind of get into it, like you kind of get comfortable like saying yeah. what you want and like what mm-hmm. happens without being like is this okay and it is a really fun time but yeah i imagine that, there's like that little bit of a yeah. you know like a bump at the beginning of like okay can we do this are we allowed can i yeah. i can sh- i can just say things now it's like, and, and, oh, and, okay. it ha- and it happens oh hmm, interesting is, can I, is there <laughs> yeah. a di- no there's there's no dice either yep. um <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I, playing a game i'm sorry i don't understand what we're doing no one's in charge and there's no dice I don't. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on um but but it, it leads us to our next question what do we need to to actually play this game um, so at, at minimum, I would say you should have something to write on and write with. Uh, right now, this game exists just in PDF form, so there isn't even a, a book you need. Mm-hmm. Uh, I th- like I like I said, it would be helpful to print out uh, the setting elements so that everybody can easily access them. Um, there's also a few optional rituals in the game that require some extra components. Uh, one requires a few pieces of paper and some scissors, and one requires you to make a hot drink. Oh, nice! But, but uh, other, other than that, you you basically you stand up and you you'd, you'd be LARPing. It's, okay, it's very <laughs> rules light and materials light. Yeah. Do you need tokens or anything like that? I know most other uh, belonging those have belonging games so you use tokens of some sort. Oh yes, um, you do need a. A couple of uh, small objects that you can use as tokens. If if you can make them kind of Christmas themed, if you have any like tiny snowflakes or, or ornaments or things, mm. that that's you know an added bonus. But I've personally used these little like flat bottomed rocks that I got at a pet store. Like mm. they're supposed they're supposed to go into aquariums, and you know they're just little shiny rocks that you can use as as tokens yeah. and, and game game accessories or or Christmas themed Hershey kisses. I was gonna say that oh. would be great. Some, like, yeah. Red and green Hershey kisses. Yeah, just I'm gonna to use my like token. That. Nom nom nom. That's right. Well, that's really the thing is idea. that like you're gonna rapidly run out if you're not careful. Yeah. <laughs> well, you gotta, that's why you gotta get the big bag. <laughs> I yeah, swear yeah. I had three and now I only have two and I don't understand what this <laughs> meant. I, I didn't make the move. I just oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Weird. Oh. <laughs> um. We you talked a little bit about it, but I, I want to expand more, especially for people who haven't spent a lot of time watching, you know, Lifetime original movies. Mm-hmm. Um, what kinds of stories and themes is this game meant to explore? 
Yeah, so uh, this game is for small stories about uh, romance and drama and, you know, around kind of a a holiday theme. There's a lot of uh, ish. There's a lot of topics of like finding your place in the world or like generosity or, you know, becoming a, a better or more confident person. Uh, Christmas movies tend to so e- even though it's their Christmas movies, it's more about the the cultural experience of Christmas rather than the religious holiday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like there are specific Christmas movies that are religiously themed, but uh, a lot of it is just about the the kind of like the atmosphere of of like families coming together and you know like finding loved ones and like going back home after a long time yeah. or mm-hmm. yeah yeah they're like they're they're fluffy character focused stories yeah uh and and a lot of times with a with a weird twist mm-hmm. as well uh which is interesting like oh my boyfriend is not really my boyfriend he's this convict that happens to be uh by my side for whatever reason yeah but his great uncle is yeah. actually Santa Claus uh-huh. mm-hmm. yeah there's there's <laughs> A lot of like fake dating and like yeah. weird coincidences. Oh, fake dating is like one of my favorite tropes. I love <laughs> yeah. it so much. I love it so much. And like, we don't really like each other, mm-hmm. but like, your mom's gonna be mad if you're single, and my mom's gonna be yeah. like, let's just go together. And then actually, they fall in love. <gasps> uh huh. Yeah. It's my I love them so much. I, I just recently, like in in watching movies for research, found a rare like New Year's Eve movie Ooh. where where it involves like these two radio hosts who like fake date each other for the show, and then they find out they're really in love with each other, and like who could have seen big, that coming? Uh huh. <laughs> like this, like it, it's just set in that like that week period after Christmas, so yeah. it's not even a Christmas movie, but like. It's the time of year where you can still reasonably keep your Christmas tree up. So yeah. It's, yeah. If there's a Christmas tree, uh, it's probably mm. a Christmas movie. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Interesting. There you, there you go. That's the litmus test. I don't know if I buy that, but that's all right. That's fine. Yeah. That's the official stands of character creation test now, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's how you get into calling, like, Die Hard a Christmas movie type. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah and, well, and technically, it's not like the period before. Te- I mean, yeah. Te- 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 technically, like the, the definition I heard is... If if you can take Christmas out of the movie and the movie still makes sense and the events of the movie still would have happened, then it's not a Christmas movie. But if you have to have Christmas in the Christmas movie or in the movie and to make the plot make sense, then it is a Christmas movie. Hey. Hmm. See, but then there's like the yeah, argument yeah. of like, what if it was a different holiday? That's a little, like, yeah, that, that feels a little What if it was Thanksgiving? Well, you know, like how long would make sense if they were still like traveling for Thanksgiving? Mm-hmm. It should. But right, it's, so that it's not a Christmas movie. Oh, them, them's fighting words. Well, but this is this <laughs> is the formula that you just yeah. presented to me. I don't know. I'm just telling what I'm I heard. Not, I, I, as a member of Character Creation Cast, am not prepared to make a stance on this issue no, right now. No, I can't make a stance either. I'm, I think this more, is, yeah. more research this is, is required. This is outside of our paycheck and... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I don't. I, I don't want to bring yeah. that kind of hate on the network. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it, it, yeah, this is the, this is the kind of controversial take that's gonna that's gonna cost you. Right, right. I'm not prepared to lose listeners over this. No, you know, like I mean, it might be spineless, but I'm not. I'm not prepared. No, for it's that. fine. It's I fine. will. I will take a stance on other issues, but not on Christmas movies. No. Uh, <laughs> if you like, if you think it's a Christmas movie, it's fine. It's right. I mean, I also said that Thanksgiving is this week, so I watched Muppet <laughs> Christmas Carol last night. No regrets. One of my favorite Christmas movies. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. So, what do characters do then in this game? Um, so, to an extent, you're doing just everyday normal things. Like, this is a game that is, you know, it's set in a small town on Earth. Uh, most of the playbooks are regular human beings. But there is kind of a... Like, Christmas movies tend to be, like, parodies of, of real situations. Yeah. Like, human beings get boiled down to uh, a few basic personality <laughs> traits or, or motivations, like... Christmas is the most important thing in the world for the the town you're, that you're in. Mm-hmm. So you you know you're in a sense it's kind of slice of life, but you're like you're taking a lot of shortcuts on on what life is. Like, right. Mm-hmm. 
like if, if there's two people who have known each other forever, they're going to fall in love over the course of a week. Or, you know, if there's a big baking competition coming up, that's going to be the most important thing for you to, to succeed in in order to find your happiness. It, it's like speed running life and emotional growth. Oh, I like that. That's such a good description of it. It really <laughs> is. Like, yeah. 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 Well, like things that are like very important during that one week are like all there is. Like it's like nothing uh -huh. exists outside of that week before Christmas. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like and your small town is it. Like that is the yeah. whole world. Like there's nothing else happening in the universe. Uh -huh. <laughs> like yeah. other than that baking competition. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's like the vague idea of somewhere else, and it's it's a big city. They have different values there. But, <laughs> yeah, but there's what, here what, and not here. Yeah. Those are the two places that exist. Mm -hmm. What is unique about a Christmas belonging compared to other belonging outside belonging games, or even if you can think of any other Christmas games? I can't think of any off the top of my head, I, but I'm sure there are some. There, there, there might be others. I, I haven't checked just to you know avoid taking influence from them. Mm -hmm. But um, one, th one thing that I kind of made that is unique about this system is that I kind of actively discourage you from being like too deep a character or like having those long drawn out moments like Christmas movies are, are very fast paced and they're simplistic. So I, I tell players like do the obvious, lean into the tropes, be transparent about what your motivations are like there. There's always that kind of moment where, you know, it, the problems could just be resolved if you just talk to each other. Oh, and mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> like, like, like go for that moment. Like, like just get people screaming about the table about how, how frustrating and weird things are. And then just like put the gas pedal on it. Like use, use your strong move to, to resolve your storyline. And then you have your happy ending. Nice. Yeah. Christmas movies really don't have subtext. They don't have no. twists. They yeah. don't have, you know, it's like you sit down to watch it and you're like, I bet this, this and this are going to happen. Uh -huh. It's probably a safe bet. Those things yeah. are going to happen. Yeah. And like, e even if a character is saying one thing, like you can easily read the emotion on their face that like, you know, from the audience that they don't really mean what they're saying. They're not they're not really OK with their crush talking to that other person. Right. right. Like, and it, there's something really satisfying about that, about being like, I am going to sit down. I know exactly what's going to happen in this mm -hmm. movie, like exactly what people are going to say, who's going to fall in love with whom. And yeah. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> like like we're we're grown ups like the real world is is complicated and stressful like let's just know what's going to happen going into it and mm -hmm. just have a good time yeah yeah i I love yeah I love the like sort of transparent just like yep this is what's gonna happen like yeah. that guy's gonna pull for that girl and she's gonna be like I'm too good for him because she's from the city and mm -hmm. like, yeah ugh. So good. Yeah, not everything has to like challenge you or make you think. Like sometimes mm -hmm. it's it's okay to just like have fun and tell a, a simple real world story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really like the the choice of using uh, the belonging outside of belonging system for this because it, in in almost every single Christmas movie, it's always like stuff doesn't go perfectly at first. And mm -hmm. then it like works its way towards that perfect ending, right? Which belonging outside belonging for those not familiar with the system, and I'm I'm vaguely familiar with the mechanics. Uh, you can't do those strong moves until you've forced weak moves on your characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is uh, another thing that I I don't necessarily know is unique about my game, but. Something that I built into the design is that each playbook has that that built in story arc to it. Like you've got your your weak move is going to be the the low point in your story, you know, where you, you you show off like the the worst aspects of your personality. You get a token for doing that. And then, you know, when once more plot happens, you, mm -hmm. you have that token, you can do your your strong move. And, you know, that kind of helps you like resolve that plot point or or help somebody else resolve theirs and, you know, kind of like become the person that the 
the movie tells you is this per- that this person is going to be in yeah. about two hours. Mm-hmm. I really like that. So that's actually a question too uh, that I want to ask real quick. Mm-hmm. Is these are these are like ninety minute made for TV movies? You know, mm-hmm. like they're they're quick. Sure, this is not like a three hour three part Lord of the Rings epic. No. Um, how long do the game sessions last usually? Are they still kind of in that like quick sort of two hour range or are they more like a four hour kind of because obviously yeah. we're people and we explain things and we, uh-huh. you know. Yeah, I'd say a, about four hours like <laughs> this. This isn't a game that's built for long term play. Yeah. Like if, if it takes you more than two sessions to to tell your story, I, I mean, good for you. You're having a good time, but. Like the the intention is to like for it to be a, a one shot where, you know, you, you might spend a little time uh, making the town or f- uh, building up your characters a little more. But I, I've tried to, like, give players shortcuts to the drama and like getting to the, the, the point of the story, like get in, have a good time, mm-hmm. get out. Yeah. Very nice. So at, at this point, we usually talk about the system, uh, the history of the system. Um, and I know, uh, like the Blondie outside Blondie system we already mentioned came out in 2018, uh, from Avery Adler. Uh, and, um, when did a Christmas belonging, when, when did this idea come to fruition? Um, so this was kind of my, my pandemic project in a way that, you know, some people learn to bake or, or learn woodworking. Yeah. I, I decided to like buckle down and, and make a long game. Like m- most of the games I, I've done on itch are like, you know, a few pages, you know, something, something very rules light, but I, I kind of hit upon the idea of like, what if a, what if a Christmas movie RPG mm-hmm. and you know, uh, like I mentioned, there's maybe a two month window out of the year where you could reasonably play a Christmas movie game. Mm-hmm. So I I got this one out uh, towards the end of 2020. And, you know, uh, around September or October, like I, I took another look at it and was like, there's a lot more that I could do with this just like to to fine tune it and, you know, make uh, the points I was going for a bit clearer, mm. like make the, the built in character arcs a bit more like in in service of of what they're going for. So in, uh, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago in uh, like late October, I, I put up a new version that is, you know, I, I added a few new playbooks. I, uh, you know, refined a, pretty much every page mm-hmm. and and uh even included a like a, a stronger condemnation of christmas movies as weird as that <laughs> sounds like i admit that they are like not a perfect art form but mm-hmm. there there are criticisms of christmas movies that go beyond them just being like light and predictable mm-hmm. like they they're very white they're very heteronormative yeah there's yeah. They they present like a few things as like normal and desirable and like I I felt I had to include a section that pushes back against some of that because I'm like I'm I'm white but I, I'm not straight basically none of my friends are straight um, and I I wanted to say like hey tell your story like make any changes to this game that you need to to kind of like push back against this like this hegemonic very like very predictable type of art form mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely yeah we de- we need more queer christmas movies absolutely yeah. i i think i've seen like maybe two yeah yeah um Is and, and those were like Kristen stewart yeah those were, were there those were like big deals uh yeah, yeah. Right. They were released because like they were like the only ones and it's I don't think it's going to be, you know, not a big deal until it becomes normal. And right. I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon, but. Yeah. No, because then they're going to be all of the like, keep Christ in Christmas people. Right, because, right. Uh-huh. You know, it's OK. Yeah. That's it. And we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, but yeah, no, of... I appreciate that note yeah. in there. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if, hey, it doesn't have to be, you know, like straight white people it's okay no. like other people celebrate christmas too <laughs> yeah yeah I, I had another point but it was just another another tangent about feel like, free like okay 
I Feel mean, free. Like, we love a good tangent on okay, this show. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, I mean, a, a lot of, like, certainly in the early days that, that we're in of, of queer Christmas movies, it it does to an extent feel like pride and how, like, banks and big corporations will, like, you know, throw on the the rainbow coat for a month and be like, "Hey, mm-hmm. we want we want gay people's money too." Right, <laughs> and you know, like you said, until it becomes a normal thing, that it it it's probably going to be like that for a little while. Yeah, like, like hey, queers, here's your queer Christmas movie that you wanted. Right, <laughs> and, and and it's it's weird because it's like now that a couple of them are coming out, it's more of a like let's pick apart this movie more than any other movie because it's the quote unquote queer movie, a queer Christmas movie of, of the season. Yeah. Um, It it has to get to that level. I don't, I don't mind if the movies are bad because a Mm. lot of Christmas movies are bad. Yeah. Right. But But I want it to be normal. Yeah. Right. Right. But there's also like the, like, do I have to support it because it's queer? And if I don't support it, they'll stop making it. But what if I don't even like it? But uh-huh. like, I don't like it just because it's queer. It's also a bad movie. Like, well, right. you know, but a, but a lot of Christmas <laughs> it's such movies a, are like an emotional well, roller right. coaster flight. Do it's I have weird. to? It is like, weird. Um, and this, and this is the one. Yeah, yeah. But, but being able to to tell your own queer Christmas stories through a game like this is fantastic because mm-hmm. you don't have to wait for corporate America to catch up. No, right. like he. Anything that you make with this game is not going to be any worse than what actually gets made. Like that's just, like so just go into like it. freeing, honestly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, wow, you can't make it any worse than it already is, friend. Off you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's like really low stakes, and I like it. I feel that like that's nice. what I need right now. Yep. Like, like just just be free. Have at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, going into this before we start making our characters, are there some terms and concepts that you think people should be aware of so that they know what we're talking about as they listen along? Sure. Um, so the, the first, uh, concept is roles. Um, basically these are playbooks by a a more movie sounding name. So Mm -hmm. when you hear us say role, just translate that to playbook, or I guess if you haven't played PBTA games, just call it a class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, see, we've, uh, gone over moves a little bit, but, uh, each playbook kind of has their own list of moves that are, are ways they interact with the world. Uh, belonging outside belonging calls them normal, weak, and strong moves. Uh, I call them things you can always do, things that get you a token and things that you give a token in order to do just to kind of remove that sort of power dynamic, uh, from it. That makes oh, sense. I'm sorry. I, I call them get, I call them uh, things you can always do. Get a token when you do, and spend a token in order to do. Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, another idea is your props. Uh, this is an idea I took from uh, Passion de las Pasiones by Branded Leon Gambetta. Um, props are basically items or things or people that you create as a part of your character in order to help define them in some way. Uh, like, for example, the the small town hottie has a prop, an old but reliable truck. And, you know, from the, the fact that they have an old truck, like, what does that tell you about them? Maybe that they're not rich, that they probably fix it themselves. Maybe there's some sentimental attachment to it. But they're, they're just kind of like open-ended things to help your character be a bit more of a person. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I could also go into setting elements. Those aren't a, a part of character creation necessarily, but they are like part of the belonging outside belonging system. Yeah. yeah let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, lastly, there are setting elements. Uh, since there isn't a GM, uh, players have a lot of freedom to decide uh, what happens in their story. And setting elements are ways for other players to to communicate their their say or to kind of throw a wrench into the works. Uh, there are uh, five setting elements to this game that are sort of like Christmas movie mainstays. There are family and friends, the small town, the big city, happenstance, and Christmas magic. And 
basically when you're playing, these are accessible to all the players. Uh, they come with their own moves and own sort of thematic elements to them. And, you know, in a scene that, that you're not in, you can just pick one up, uh, make one of the moves, say what happens, and then the other player kind of has to react to that as if a GM had told them uh, what happens. Except it's not a GM. It's your, your fellow player and your friend. Very nice. <laughs> Well, is there anything we, else we need to know before we get into character creation then? Um, so one last thing is that uh, each of these playbooks is kind of centered around a, a Christmas movie trope. Mm -hmm. And some of those tropes aren't always like main character types. Uh, you know, there's like a, a journalist and event planners. And, you know, in in some ways, each of them kind of can serve as a main character if, you know, the, the moves are are written sort of vaguely enough that they could apply to you as well as to someone else. But in in a way, like, if you're the kind of player who maybe doesn't feel as comfortable, like, talking a lot during during the game, you could pick up one of these more supporting character type roles and, you know, along with the setting elements, help tell a story for the other players. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you you really are drawn to one of the playbooks, but it doesn't feel like a main character type, uh, that's something you should kind of communicate to the other players to say, like, hey, I know, you know, journalists aren't always like a big part of a story, but I'd, I'd like to take a, a more active role if I can. Absolutely. Oh, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what we do here. <laughs> this, this is going to be so much fun. Uh, it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, I'm, uh, I'm well, so excited. Well, well, well shall, shall we make some people? Let's make some people. Let's make some people. Let's make some people. Oh, Let's yes. make some people. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I, uh, I really meant to, like, leading up to this recording, to, like, watch a bunch of Christmas movies and stuff. And unfortunately, this week did not go that way. So yeah, th thankfully, uh, my wife has had them on in the living room like a lot. <laughs> so I've been catching like a few minutes here and there, uh, you know, uh, as I'm walking through the, the living rooms. And uh, goodness gracious, there's a <laughs> lot of them out there. There yeah, are. And I haven't watched any like new ones really in a long time. So mm -hmm. I'm probably way behind on, you know, what the kids are into as far as Christmas movies these days. Uh, thankfully, so. I think we can take all of our cr previous Christmas movie knowledge and uh, utilize that uh, easily yeah. enough. Um, yeah. Or, it carries forward. Yeah. But I mean, even that, it looks it's like. It's really timeless, honestly. There, there's a <laughs> lot of good roles uh, in this in this game, and I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming uh, role selection is first. Uh, what what do we do? Um, so in in the game itself, the first thing that I have players do is create the town that Ooh. you're going to be yes. setting your story in. We should do it. We should do, we should it. do it. We don't yeah, we do don't it. like creating worlds or anything though. Yeah. So maybe we can skip that part world. this no. time. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's bring someone from a world building podcast on our show and tell yeah. them how we don't like building worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a place. He's totally no, yeah, gonna buy go. it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna make a place. Okay. Let's make a place. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, let's make a place. Gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so like stupidly excited. But maybe because <laughs> I've had like too much coffee this morning. I'm like, oh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm oh. so here for this. <laughs> okay, okay. So our setting. Um. Yeah. So what do we? How do? We, how, what do we do? Need to do to create this setting? Okay. So. Uh, each game of A Christmas Belonging takes place in a small town that is a few hours drive away from the big city. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously we're a podcast. There's a, a strong visual element to map making that we don't uh, we don't necessarily need to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, there oh, is a do you anyway. Uh, I have my iPad pulled up in front of me. Okay, I'm okay, going to yeah, be doing yeah, that yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there is a, a list of things that you're uh, going to be creating as part of this small town. OK, um, there if you don't want to set your story in a small town, I do include options for that. There's, you know, a few minor tweaks of things. Yeah, but I, I feel like we're going for the, the classic Christmas movie feel. Mm -hmm. I want this to be town. like the tropiest trope. I don't know. I guess I, I everybody else can feel free to like X that. But I feel like I want no, no. this to be like the tropiest. Yes. 
Uh, I am here for the trope, trope yes. salad. Super, super trope salad uh, with a little weird. A little weird okay. Yeah. A little just weird. All right. Just a little weird. Okay. Because uh, I've got my eye on a couple different roles. And, okay. Uh, that's okay. going to make things a little weird anyway. So. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. So small town. Yeah. So. And, and you can come up with these in any order because the first one is the name of the town and names are hard. Like <laughs> we can we can do the name last, like after we come up with some defining features about it. All right. That sounds but, great. Uh, for, first up is the town name. If we're prepared for that. I'm not prepared. OK. And now I feel like I need to know about it to like okay. name it. Let's, let's hold off on the name then. Uh, next is a natural landmark. Could be like a a river, a mountain, a lake, Ooh. something something that was there before the town. I I want to say like a like a like I want to say like a pond or something like that. Pond, interesting. Mm. Like a like a like a nice uh, big pond. Mm. I feel like we call it the lake. Uh, yeah, I think the like, lake. Like we're like, but, it, but it's not. It's really just a pond. Yeah, yeah. Like there, there's probably some sort of like scientific or like geographical distinction between ponds and lakes that this is technically a pond, but yeah. everybody calls it the lake. Our yeah. town insists that it's a, it's like the pride of the town. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's something you can skate across very easily mm. in winter. Oh, for the yes. all important ice skating scene, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. The bond. Okay. The lake. Okay. Love it. What's what is our lake called? Ryan. Oh goodness. Uh <laughs> <laughs> can't have a have a lake and not have a name for it. Yeah. Because you don't name ponds, you name lakes. Oh. Interesting. That's true. So this is uh gosh, it's it's got it's just gotta be like the lake and then the town name. Hmm. Wait, right? wait, wait, so, we'll bleed a lot yeah. of that one. Uh huh. Okay. I'm gonna write lake. I'm gonna put it in quotes here. Well, you wanted like, you wanted like uh, super tropey, right? I did. That's true. true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm thinking we need to work the the word pond into the town name now. Oh, so yeah. It's, so it's like Lake Pond, like Lake Gold Pond or something. I, I like that. <laughs> like Gold Pond. So the town is called Gold Pond. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's go with it. All one word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like uh, it's 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 close to gold bond, but I'll I'll yeah. allow it. Yeah, just for the product placement, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, they they were trying to get the factory to move there. It, it didn't quite work out. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a just a typo in the paperwork, and it wasn't oh, meant to be. That's unfortunate. Do people insist that it's pronounced differently? Like it's clearly gold pond, but people say like if you're from there, you call it something different like people are in there's a town called everybody here calls it new berlin but it's clearly new berlin but uh -huh. if you're from around here it's berlin yeah like like mm -hmm. like athens georgia and yeah yeah stuff like yeah. that so it's like, like, there's a, a gold, it's like there's it's obvious, gold yeah, pond. There's a, yeah gold yeah. gold pond gold pond <laughs> there, gold there's, yeah the obvious pronunciation and then what everybody <laughs> what everybody actually, actually says, says. Yeah. yeah welcome to yeah. gold pond gold pond Gulpin. Yeah. <laughs> Gulpin. <laughs> I hate it so much. Yeah. Oh, yes. that's okay. so good. Yeah, okay. that's, that's when that's when the ice on the lake breaks here. You're gulpin. Gulpin. <laughs> and that's a joke that every dad in the town makes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is our one natural feature is Lake Gulpin to that is actually mm. a pond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Tom, convoluted already. And we've only it. done one thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got the town name in there. We're on right. two. Okay. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, next is a town mascot. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Th this was kind of my my love letter to like Japanese towns who like mm. always have these weird mascots. Like it's it's a bowl of noodles with a spider coming out of it or something. I, I yes. Wanna... <laughs> For some reason, I'm thinking of a like a honey bear, like a oh, like bear. a bear that that loves honey. Oh, what about a, a bear in a bee costume? Oh, oh. so much! And and that's, then that's that works kind of like cute. the gold in there too, yeah. you know? Yes, because yes. honey is like gold. I love uh, that a bear in a bee costume. <laughs> it's amazing. Does he have a name? Mm. I gotta stop asking everybody else to names, name things. But I think like he are, does. Are hard. You I, know he names does are need hard. a name. He's gotta have a name. Yeah. Yeah. But like a bear pun 
or a bee pun uh, as it or, name. or a honey pun a honey pun, honey pun. Uh, um, uh, my my first okay. instinct is sticky and i don't like that <laughs> yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> No, we can, we can, it's we can do be, a lot It's got to be cute. And, yeah. uh, uh, stripes. I like, I kind of like the bear. stripes the bear. Maybe. We'll think, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to noodle on that. Cause I feel like there's yeah, gotta yeah. be a good bear pun in there somewhere. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next is a struggling industry or threatened asset. Mm. And, you know, threat- threatened asset can be, like, defined as, like, a-, a forest nearby that's slated for logging or, you know, the rec center that might be torn down for a parking lot. Yeah. Oh. Oh, what about um, the the stream that uh, feeds the pond uh, is is being threatened to be diverted? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they're going to build a new... Um... I don't know, subdivision? No. Um, what's something that small towns hate? Uh, wind farms. Oh, wind farm. You're going to build a wind farm? Oh, oh no, and no. that's going to threaten the bees, too. Bees don't like wind farms. Oh, no. Mm. Yep. That's it. A new wind farm. Really excited to see this map now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I would. Pressure's on. I haven't drawn it out yet right now. I'm just making my notes, but I got to see. That's amazing. Yeah. So uh, next are three businesses on Main Street. Okay, one of them is a coffee shop. There has to be a coffee shop. Yes. Um, And it is the best place to get internet because most of the town still has dial-up. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like a little internet cafe. Yeah. Um, oh, is is it maybe like even an an old cyber cafe where yeah. it's just like rows of computers? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. And been, they still have like there, a working fax yeah. machine, too. Yeah. It's been there like since the 90s. Like they, they've kind of kept up with technology to an extent, but just the look of the place is very like mm-hmm. that, that kind of like plastic neon of the old IMAX. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've got an internet cafe. So what's the name of it? Uh, no, I was just trying What's to think that, of that. The names. I um, know. Okay, you wanted us to make a town and businesses and not name them. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> this this adds to the immersion. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's got to be. Uh, let's see, uh, like maybe like the busy bee or something like that. Mm. Mm. Or or a buzz, like, some sort of buzz. Yeah, like a like yeah. caffeine buzz. Uh, the cyber um. buzz or. Cyber tie it in with the mascot. Mm, yeah. yeah. Cyber space. That's it could just be cyber space. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Cyber space. Yeah. It, it's All a right. public domain mascot. Any business in the town mm-hmm. can use it. There's an antique shop. Oh yes. Ooh. There has to be an antique shop. Um it's just uh let's see. Uh we'll just say it's like Jill's antique shop. I think it's yeah. Muriel. It, Muriel is a better yeah. name for an antique like shop it, owner. Yeah, it, it's named after the owner. Yeah, so what was the name? Muriel. Muriel? Mm-hmm. I like that name. That's a good, uh, that's a good that's, uh, antique shop name. Muriel's Antiques. Yep. Okay. What else? What else we got? We got one more. All right, Danny, do you want to come up with one? So I've got an internet cafe, and Ryan has an antique shop. I think you need to come up with one now. Okay. Your um, turn. <laughs> so... I think there's probably like a the one restaurant in town. Mm. Like it, it's very, I'm gonna say like fifties diner style. Okay. Maybe do we want to put the waitresses on roller skates? Is it that? Um. Sort of? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Go go for the tropes. Waitresses on on roller skates. Of mm. uh, a lot of like. Like red and white check gingham table mats. You can you can still get like a burger and fries for five bucks. Yeah, they've like, got shakes and um, you know a jukebox. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Love it. Uh, I want some. Uh, see if I can look up some like fifties slang to name this place. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go with bingos. bingos. Love it. I like that. Bingo's Diner? Uh, oh, hold on. Or just Bingo's. Bing, Bingo's Fat City. 
Oh my but, gosh. But but people just call it bingos because they're watching <laughs> their weight these days. All right. Wow. I lo- okay. I love this small town already. Yep. Mm-hmm. It it like we've clearly like put it right in the past. Like mm-hmm. it like nineties with the cyber cafe or like fifties with the diner. This is not a, a modern place by any means. And then you've got the antique shop, which has all of the mm-hmm. antiques over the ages. Yeah. All right. So what what's next? Yeah. Uh, next up, we have an upcoming event. Ooh. And it could, this could be like a, a pageant or a competition or like a, a big celebration. See, it's the Honey Bake Off. The Honey Bake Off. You got to make a, you got to make a baked dish with honey mm. as the main like the main ingredient. I like that. Or maybe like make it a bit bigger, be like a, a honey festival. Oh, yeah. There, there's probably like some guy who's brewing his own mead. Uh, there's like mm-hmm. d- different honeys made from like orange blossoms or like clover or like cinnamon honeys. Yes, because local honeys are like a big, those are a big deal. Yeah. I actually used to live across the street from like a, a local honey maker. Like they had like the, the racks of, of bees in their, mm-hmm. their little containers. Never got a chance to try the honey, though, but it was I was always when I'd see it in the store, I'd be like, those are my neighbors. <laughs> so next up is the most important thing that has happened here. Oh, um, I think that the president one time in the 80s um, came to this town to sign some kind of legislation related to bees or honey or something like that. Yeah. And uh, like, I mean, it was for like one day. Okay. Um, but everybody's still telling stories about the time that Jimmy Carter in his second term, obviously, second yeah, term yeah. Jimmy Carter, uh, <laughs> came we're here. Living, to, uh, we're living in Carter's America. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to remember the one shot game that had that as the I, plot point. I think it was their kids on bikes episode. Yes. Um, that's but it. I also have a friend, I'm a political science major, and I have a friend who like wrote one of her like thesis papers on like how Jimmy Carter was like this sort of like unrecognized genius. Uh-huh. Um and like the things that could have happened if Carter was president. And so I always remember that. It's like yeah. Carter's second term, Carter's uh-huh. America. Um <laughs> So, yes, I think Jimmy Carter in his second term came to sign some legislation about honey production. Um, and people are still talking about the time Jimmy Carter was here. Yeah. There's like, a, <laughs> uh, there's like a special like honey peanut butter that they make every year as like memorializing like the bees and the peanut farmer president. Oh, and... that's so cute. Like honey peanut butter sandwiches. And like, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's adorable. Okay. I love it. So next we have a thing that the town has in abundance. And, you know, this could be something like metaphysical, like Christmas spirit or like generosity. Or it could be there's a lot of trees or bees or bears. I mean, all of us. We, we're pretty much on this honey train, right? Uh, it, it's yeah, whether you lobby or not. It's got to yeah, have yeah. just honey uh, in abundance, like everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like at the diner, you can get honey with anything and Mm -hmm. like everybody's got honey on their shelves and it's all the local honey. And yeah, like if there's, you know, basically anywhere in the South, like when you order tea, it's sweet tea. And in this town, it's like you order tea and it's tea sweetened with honey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. And next is a thing the town desperately lacks. Huh. Okay, here's a question. Um, is Main Street, like, lead directly to Lake Goldbund? Or is it, like, kind of off from it mm-hmm. a little bit? Because I dropped my map. I like it leading straight to the the pond, Lake. Okay. Just kind of imagining how a town gets built up. It's usually, like, around uh, a natural landmark. Yeah. So, like, maybe at one point they were, like, fishing from this pond, or, like, it was important to them in some way, and then just... That, like, their road to the pond became a main street. Got it. Okay, sorry, what was your question? Oh, um, a thing <laughs> the town desperately lacks. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm trying to maybe tie it into the, the wind farm thing. Mm. Like, be, like, 
like maybe in a way that like like it wouldn't be a terror like completely a terrible thing if like they had more wind power for some reason but yeah what well, I mean, I mean I think it sounds just like if we've got like an internet cafe and stuff like there's some infrastructure needs here that's, like that's we're what kind I was of thinking, out of the right? way yeah from like a big a big city stuff yeah, you know like bring, so in bringing the wind farms grid. is going to bring the power it's going to bring internet high speed internet uh cuz they need to monitor all those wind farms and and that'll be readily available to uh, all the people of the the city or the town. Some jobs, man. Yeah, jobs, some jobs too. Yeah. So infrastructure. Yeah, or like even just the idea of like newness and and the modern world. Yeah. yeah. Like like there's there's a whole lot going on out there, and like you you can't there's keep more relying. than just honey, and you can't keep yeah. telling people that one story about Jimmy Carter. Oh. Something like new needs to happen here. That's true. <laughs> that was 40 years ago. <laughs> oh, no. It was. Oh, no. Ooh, Are you okay, now. Ryan? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, I'm you were fine. there for Carter's second term. I was, I was uh, 1980. You can tell us how it went. I was yeah. a baby. Oh, 40 years. Okay. Yes, the 80s, <laughs> the early 80s were 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to the future, everybody. Oh, oh, goodness. I hate the All future. Right. Now, now that I've had an existential crisis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, uh, that, that's all that we, we need for the, the town, if you'd like oh. to break, break down for a little, little bit. Yeah, yeah, I need a minute. So, okay, no, that's fine. Um, but I wanted to finalize the name of the bear, right? Oh, yes. Uh, finalize yes, the name of the bear. And um, for, for some reason, Honey the Bear uh popped into my brain but um we don't have to go with that it's very on the nose right just i feel like there's got to be like a good i don't know i don't have anything better though so and i don't think that we can like hold up the the process uh so uh, apologies if this creates a weird association in your mind but i was thinking of like hibernate I was I, kind of too, like yeah. because I was like hibernate. Nate. Hibernate, yeah. No, I was thinking that too because I was like Nate's a name, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> I gave it to my child, so I'm pretty sure it's a name. And then Hyper Nate, I like that one. We could just Hibernate. call him Nate for short, but like his full yeah. name, everybody knows his full name is Hibernate, but everybody calls him Nate. I like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, would that make the the Cyber Cafe's name then like Hyperspace? Is <laughs> That's nothing. Uh, it's almost hyper, it's almost hyperspace. Cy cy cybernates. Cybernate. <laughs> cybernate. Because they because do it, use like, the bear like, mascot. Yeah, hibernate, cybernate. Yeah, uh, I think that would, oh, I think yeah. I like that. I kind of like that. I'm going to change it. Cyber, Cyber cybernate. Cyber. And we're, we're selling, we're, we're, it's cyber, right? Cy and it's, yeah, it's, it's high, high, cyber. high bear as well. Cybernate. High, high bear, cyber. Yeah. High bear with a Y, right? C Y, yes. C Y B E A R. So is it yeah. cybernate? Like it's yes. just like so much pun happening there's, at once. There's a lot of layers to the name. That, okay, I like, like it. it. If you're not from the town, it's going to take you five minutes to explain the name. <laughs> but and it's you're a like, great somebody story. should have done some editing here. Like they should have had focus group this a little bit, but they did. There's didn't. like this whole folk tale around the name itself. Right. Yeah. Yep. I love it. So 40 years ago, Jimmy Carter came and... And he came and there was no internet yet, but now we have an yeah. internet cafe. We got yeah. an internet cafe. It's fine. It's fantastic. Yeah. You get the high speed <laughs> of, of 44 kilobits per second. Yeah. Wireless. We've got wireless. We got wireless. Wow. That, that just you came that there's no wires anymore. No wires. It just, it just goes through the air. It just goes through the <laughs> air. I can't connect, believe it. It's connect ridiculous. your phone to anything. But, this is the future. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have created Goldfin, Goldfin. Uh, and uh, I, I love this, uh, this honey themed uh, bear centric pond town. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Uh, this game really has me hyped up for the holiday season. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. I, I'm glad that we ended up covering it. Um, uh, the, the world building in this episode, mm -hmm. uh, specifically was, uh, it created like such a rich backdrop, uh, for our characters that we're actually going to be meeting in the next episode. Yeah. 
And and I understand that you actually did a session of this game with your group um, recently, right? Yeah. So the other night we did, we just did the character creation and the town creation. So just the things that you're going to hear in this episode, we haven't gotten mm-hmm. to actually like play the game yet i'm hoping next week or i don't know maybe in the coming weeks we're kind of doing it like when we don't have our full group there Mm -hmm. um but yeah we had a lot of fun doing that one too and it turned out very differently than ours did um it's a very different group of people Um, from the little i've heard of it but it sounds very on brand right yeah i mean well so far there's no no necromancy or blood magic or anything but you know i think there's still time well so there's still time you know, the magic of Christmas could also yeah. be blood magic. Unclear. That's true. The blood magic um, of a Christmas. That sounds like a great. Christmas. That sounds like a great uh, title for a I for a Hallmark movie. I would watch that movie. movie. Yeah. I would watch that movie. Yeah, I I was actually at the Hallmark store over the weekend, and I I did tweet at Danny. Um, I was like, look at all this swag for your game because they have a whole table full of like Hallmark movie merch yeah. that's like, this is my Hallmark movie watching blanket. Uh-huh. And so I was like, look at all this stuff for your game. I know. Props <laughs> props galore. Right? <laughs> uh, well, before we let you all go uh, for the week, we do have some calls to action uh, and a review to read. Ooh, I love reviews. Mm-hmm. But first, if you like what we're doing here, you can check out the one shot network patreon secret archive we have a couple episodes in there now and we're hoping to get at least one bonus episode out every month to uh, generally cover smaller games um sometimes actually play the game maybe even though that's not what we do but you know it's what we do if you pay us to do it i guess i guess Um, yeah (laughs) so we'll have more of that content in there pretty soon um as soon as ryan's feeling better and we can kind of schedule around the holidays and stuff yeah um but we've been having a lot of fun with those smaller games so Mm -hmm. if you are able to um back the patreon you can hear some of that and hear some of the fun we're having yeah, and there might even be some guests uh, aside from us two that that meander in from time to time. Uh, Tracy Burnett had been on for a couple, and and uh, right now it, you it, can hear Peggy in the background. Peggy really wants to be on an episode at some point. I know, so um, that'd so be really there exciting. You go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, we played we played um, Hero Dog Saves Town with my yeah. actual dog. So I we know. pitched the ideas at her and let her pick. So you can play some of these <laughs> games with a dog. It's very true. Um, Also, we are currently in the beginning stages of planning a live streamed panel uh, where we'll be creating random characters with the audience, kind of like we did for the Catacon 2019 panel. Um, And we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, We're we're very early on in the stages of it, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep you posted on where that winds up and uh we think it'll be a really good time uh when we actually get it going we'll we'll announce it more when we get closer yeah i think we were both really sad that we didn't get to do it at a catacon we had so much fun doing it the first time and so we've been kind of brainstorming and noodling with how we can make that work online um hopefully maybe some like involvement from the chat um as we kind of roll up stuff on random tables so Mm -hmm. i think that that would be a lot of fun i'm really hoping we can find a way to make it work i'd love to like make it work for charity it somehow um but yeah i think yeah we're we're working it we're noodling i would say a lot of good we're in ideas. the noodling phase <laughs> that's very true <laughs> um finally it is review time if you Ooh. want to help us out a ton and you know make our our hearts warm you can leave a five star review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, other places, a post it note. We will read them here, like this one from Armin on Podcast Addict. Really nice podcast, lovely hosts, interesting guests, and fun systems. Love it. Well, thank you, Armin. Uh, yes, and, thank you and so thank much. Thank you for leaving a review there. Uh, we we've got a few, a couple reviews, uh, well, three of them actually on Podcast Ooh. Addict right now. Um, so it's always, I always go there about once a month or so to check them out. Um, Mm -hmm. but you know, with everything, it's been a while. I know this one came back in, uh, August or so. Um, so we do check them. We do get to them. Uh, I did ask on my birthday, 
uh, as a birthday gift if everybody could, you know, leave a, yeah. a review. So, hey, everyone who hasn't left a review, it was my birthday last week. And did you get me something? <laughs> if not, please leave us a review. It would be a yeah, lovely be really nice. late birthday present. Um, yeah, seriously, they, they help us out a ton. And uh, it's really, really great, especially, you know, like uh, when things are stressful in life, which they tend to be a lot for both of us. Uh, you know, me with my move and, and being sick and Amelia uh, with with everything that's going on there. Yeah, um, with just life. Like Ryan has his like specific list of things. And Amelia's just like <laughs> generically stressed. <laughs> just, you know, uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. No, life is a lot right now. And it feels yeah. it feels good to know that this thing that we put out into the world matters to people. Yep. And I think, you know, we, we say it every time we read a review that we do really value it. But like we I, we really do. They they warm our hearts and sometimes they make me cry a little bit. Yeah, and maybe they will make me healthy. So uh, yeah. leave, leave five yes, the reviews. the healing power of podcasting. The healing reviews. power of podcasting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes, everyone, please help heal Ryan. Yeah. So, you know, Your it's worth a shot. Your podcast review can save I, one Ryan. I, I don't know if it'll work or not, but, you know, we can try, right? Well, you know, uh, leave a, review a lot of science and, is trial and error. That's true. And who doesn't like science? <laughs> I love science. <laughs> well, that's all we have for today's episode. Uh, join us next time as we dive deep into character creation and get some really phenomenal results. Um, until then... Take care of yourselves, stay safe, drink water, get vaccinated, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like All My Fantasy Children. Each week, Aaron Katana Saez and Jeff Stormer take a listener-submitted prompt and, using some of their favorite tabletop RPGs, create an original fantasy character. Along the way, they share laughs, stories, verbal hugs, and populate a shared universe one story at a time.